As if Russia needed any more proof as to why it's considered one of the toughest countries in the world regarding laws, WNBA All-Star Brittany Griner is currently being held in a Russian facility after being found guilty on drug-related charges. Six months have come and gone like the wind, February being the month all the mayhem unfolded and things honestly aren't looking that bright for Miss Griner. Recently, she had officially been sentenced to nine years in a Russian prison, which may come as a shock to her home country, the United States. But definitely not to Russia themselves. With the ability to overturn her conviction via appeal, the race to freeing Brittany Griner is on, and it just may all be in the hands of the US and a Russian murderer. In an extreme case of F around and find out, a member of the Women's National Basketball Association, Brittany Griner, is locked up with no sight of being let out anytime soon. After touching down in Russia in pursuit of being cut a check for competing on the Russian basketball team UMMC Katrinburg, Brittany's luggage was sniffed out and Russian Federal Customs at Moscow's Sheremetyevo International Airport had found vape cartridges containing THC, a marijuana concentrate along with hashish oil. With the quickness, Brittany was detained and unfortunately has been detained ever since, dating back to February of this year. Word of a WNBA star being held by Russian authorities spread faster than COVID-19, but no mention of any names were given, that is, until Brittany's wife, Sherelle Griner, took to her social media to explain the situation eventually name-dropping Brittany as being the lady in question. The prison, dubbed Correctional Colony No. 1, would be Brittany's hideaway for the next six months as she awaited her fate, a former orphanage turned women's correctional facility located in the village of Novoy Grishin. Its artificially lit gray steel corridors decorated with an orthodox church and a sewing factory served as Brittany's home away from home, and we can confidently say that her stint is anything but homey. Terrifying is more like it. Relentless hours spent spent, media coverage and rallies, all in pursuit of the same end goal, to bring Britney home, had ensued in the States and continues to do so. The official WNBA and Britney's home base team, the Phoenix Mercury, releasing statements in support of their teammate. America hadn't been the only country cheering for Griner's release either. Her Russian team members also have been shouting, free Britney till it's backwards, since word of her arrest had circulated. While awaiting her verdict, her lawyers would argue that Britney had no idea the vape pens were even in her luggage when she stepped foot onto Russian territory, which didn't sit well for many who believe the opposite. State-appointed forensic examiners and experts who examined the cartridges were deemed unreliable by Britney's defense attorneys who argued that technical as well as procedural errors were conducted, stating the examinations of the cartridges did not comply with the legislation nor with the norms of Russian criminal code. They also buckled down on marijuana's benefits for medical usage that Britney sometimes times used for pain. Nonetheless, their emphasis on Britney having no criminal intentions may have been accurate. But the narrative that she accidentally slipped the vape into her luggage while packing in a hurry did not sit well with the Russian court. Britney's defense was working harder than perhaps the defense during her basketball tournaments, but the US were working even harder. Upon hearing the news, President Joe Biden released a statement that read, Today, American citizen Brittany Griner received a prison sentence that is one more reminder of what the world already knew. Russia has wrongfully detained Brittany. It's unacceptable, and I call on Russia to release her immediately so she can be with her wife, loved ones, friends, and teammates. My administration will continue to work tirelessly and pursue every possible avenue to bring Brittany and Paul Whelan home safely as soon as possible. In an exchange, in exchange for Britney's safe return, the US offered convicted Russian arms trafficker Victor Bout as part of a potential transactional offer. A two-for-one deal, corporate security director Paul Whelan would also be released to the states if the exchange goes according to plans. Responding to the offer, Russia's government requested for convicted murderer Vadim Krasikov to be added to the potential swap. A fair deal, it may not be a simple one, since Vadim Krasikov had been convicted of murder in Germany in 2021 and remained in German custody to this day. Spokesperson for the National Security Council, Adrian Watson, told reports that holding two wrongfully detained American citizens hostage in exchange for a Russian assassin cooped up in a third world country isn't a serious counter offer, but a bad faith attempt to avoid the deal that had been laid on the table. On July 29th, a press conference was held and an update was given urging the US to move forward with their proposal. Testifying at her trial two days beforehand on July 27th, Brittany recounted the day she 
had gotten arrested. Translation was misconstrued, and according to Brittany herself, the interpreter didn't provide a full translation. A translation app had to be whipped out and put to use via her phone so that she could effectively communicate as best as she could with a customs officer. She claims that she was also not offered an explanation of her rights, nor was she offered a lawyer, all whilst being instructed to sign documents. Witnesses Maxim Rybakov and Yevgenia Belyakova, director of Britney's Russian team UMMC, and the other teammate insisted that their girl was no criminal by any means. A very good teammate is what Yevgenia calls Britney, and a political pawn is what the US calls the entire ordeal. Nevertheless, Britney insists on not being used in that manner, pleading with those inside the courtroom that politics is hopefully far away from her trial. Besides being potentially used as a political pawn and Russia thinking they've won up the US, an even bigger topic in the midst of the chaos resurfaced. The war on gender pay and the pay gap between men and women. The average male in the NBA is on average given millions upon signing to a team. Matter of fact, millions tend to be the common salary for its biggest players. LeBron James being a prime example, and an outspoken advocate regarding Britney's situation. On the contrary to their male counterparts, the women's NBA, however, are given only a fraction of those in the NBA. Britney's own salary being an estimated 200,000, despite being one of WNBA's top players and a double winning gold Olympic champion. The male versus female debate, as we all know, isn't anything new. Fights and talks of gender equality in the work field becoming a redundant subject this time being brought to the forefront, given Britney's determination to play for her Russian basketball team for an additional milli or so, something she often has done during the winter off seasons in the WNBA. Her plea, guilty, something Britney had given herself during her testimony in a court proceeding turned out to be a strategic one since less than 1% of defendants are actually acquitted in Russian criminal cases, and since acquittals can be overturned, the chances of Britney getting off with a not guilty plea were slim to none. Let an expert on Russian law tell it, William Pomeranz, your best bet is admitting your guilt and hoping for a lesser sentence. With so much back and forth taking place all in the midst of Russia's war with Ukraine, Britney had all the time to think about what freedom truly meant. Spending the 4th of July alone in a Russian jail cell prompted her to send her own letter addressed to the White House appealing for her own freedom. August 4th would be the day Britney's fate would be revealed, and to her dismay, Judge Anna Sotnikova delivered it to her. Nine years in Russian prison. On top of the lengthy prison sentence, a fine of $16,400 was determined. Before the ruling, Britney did one last plea with an emotional speech. I made an honest mistake, and I hope that in your ruling that it doesn't end my life here. I had no intent on breaking any Russian laws. I did not conspire or plan to commit this crime. Lawyer Maria Bagavalina, who'd also be responsible for bringing up the pay gap, along with Alexander Boykov, wrote in a statement on how they'll appeal the decision in which they have only a handful of days to do so, and criticized the courts for ignoring their evidence. Boykov also made sure to mention how the average time spent in jail for a crime such as the one he's opposing is minimum five years, with almost a third of those convicted reduced to parole. Russia's tensions with the US amid their war with Ukraine may contribute to Brittany Griner's unjust detainment. A performance Formative tactic and an attempt to drive up the bargain for Britney's release, all due to a petty beef between Russia and Griner's home country. A prisoner swap may also still be up for grabs if Russia officially agrees on the offer. Whatever the case may be, whether your team bring her home or team lock her up, work is being done tirelessly behind the scenes to bring Britney Griner home. Only time will tell. How do you feel about the whole Britney Griner situation? We want to know your thoughts in the comments, and subscribe for the latest Britney Griner updates.